Hey folks, Chris from All Designs here, and this is part two of the Tamiya 135th scale M4 Easy 8 tank build. So lots of progress has been made. As you can see, we've got uh, basically all three pieces, the main pieces put together. Um, a lot of the little bits have uh, all been put on. I like to do that with my tank builds. I like to get as many pieces on the tank as I can before painting. That way you're not gonna see glue marks. And the great thing with World War II tanks as when you you know use glue and then spray it looks like weld marks you know especially with world war ii tanks i can try to get in close here without losing focus but uh, i actually like when a little glue seeps out because when you do go to spray it you know it looks like weld right so unlike modern tanks where um you sand that away with world war ii tanks you tend to leave it and uh, it looks like a natural weld so with, uh, you know, this World War II tank that I've been doing, I go through the instructions, you know, basically page by page, find out where a lot of things go and put them on now, right? So I don't really follow the instructions, you know, you know, one, two, three, four. I go all through the book, you know, as you know, if you've been following me for a while, and I put things on now, and then I spray. And the spray I've been using here is the correct one for this model, at least the, the version that I'm doing is the TS5 Olive Drab. And so far I've been getting away with just using one can and I got about a quarter of a can left and that should be enough to do the rest of the tank, which is obviously, you know, the road wheels and the hatches and probably the barrel. And I might be able to get away with just using one can on this entire model. And then obviously when the weathering comes into play, um, you know, we'll be using other things like my oils and uh, actual grime um, kits that I have, and we'll get into that at a later date. Now, um, obviously, I like to put on as many parts as I can, as I said, now, because it will hide the glue, you know, obviously the sheen of the glue and things like that. Obviously, it looks like weld marks, covered that. And now we're going to start getting into um, the more detailed parts. Um, the reason why I left the hatches off now and not glued them on, because I'm not quite sure, you know, if I'm going to have some of them open, some of them closed. So, you know, we'll do those at a later date. And uh, as far as the road wheels go, um, the instructions call, like, I looked at them closely. These are the same, except for these right here, obviously, right? Because the male part will fit into the female part. And the reason why I glued this on now is for obviously for better adhesion, but I really wanted to double check because this part here goes into he through here, obviously, right? But I was worried about fit, right? Because now that I've glued this on here, now I didn't do this prematurely, I wanted to be sure. I wanted to be sure that, you know, these were identical as far as the, you know, inside outside goes. And they are, because I, I wouldn't be able to get this wheel through here if this makes sense, right? Now, because these are identical, I'm gonna be able to fit, you know, the female wheel on this side and the male wheel on this side and close these on at a later date, right here, right? Because obviously this one here, A18, says it goes on the inside and A22 goes on the outside, but these wheels are identical. So I know I'm gonna be able to put those on later and put them on here, so I'm happy. That way I was able to glue these on now, as you can see, and paint it all in one shot. I hope that made sense. If that doesn't make sense, please let me know in the comment section and I can rephrase that. It makes sense in my head. Because I didn't want to put the road wheels on now. I wanted to spray this all in one go. I mean, this is all gonna be covered in mud and guck anyway. But, so there we go. So that covers the road wheels anyway. So again, we'll spray those later. Um, other things like the turret, things like that, obviously, you know, this is not glued on, it, it's supposed to turn, uh, the mantlet, things like that, that's, that can pivot up and down, um, that's just the way that's designed with, um, you got poly caps and such in there. The barrel I got coming is aftermarket metal barrel, so that'll come at a later date, things like that. Now, obviously, this is when the top half comes down, this explains it a little bit later. right here this will just slip down into here right and then there's a poly cap 
right there that fits in but we're not gonna put that in yet obviously because we're waiting for our tracks now I got aftermarket set of tracks coming in um, that I like to do I don't like the rubber ones so much I want to you know link them all together and then it looks a lot better so you know that's gonna slow us up a little bit with this but that's uh, not, not to worry I mean obviously tons of other pieces got to go on as far as you know pioneer tools and such so we're gonna be busy with that I'm not going to be doing too much weathering right now, not until it's all put together, but um, it's really coming along. I'm really uh, having a lot of fun with this tank build. Uh, the painting and such has uh, it gone on really nice. Really clean, right out of the factory so far, but we'll, we'll be changing that here shortly. And as you can see, the post for the 30 caliber, and it's really showing up now because uh, we've got some paint on it. And then obviously I wanted to do this separate, right? Like this is the natural um, paint color that came with the, the model, I guess you can say, like the factory. So you can see that there's a little bit of a difference there. So that's like the natural plastic color you get with the kit. And then this is the uh, Tamiya TS5. So obviously the lid's a lot darker than the actual color, but... So there we go. So that's what we've done so far. Um, you know, obviously a lot of pieces have gone on since you've seen the model, you know, in part one. But it's been a lot of fun, and especially on the inside. I did a lot of the gluing of the parts on the inside. That's where I put a lot of the glue, as you can see. So I put the parts on top and then glued it from the inside. That way no glue really showed along the edges. I find that was a better way to go about gluing this model together. So there we go. I think the next step for this is I'm going to do some of the decaling right here. I'm going to put the star here, the star here, and um, and then that way it has a chance to dry and such like that. And then I'll do a, like a, a clear coat, maybe a semi-gloss, or just maybe just a clear coat. That way when the weathering goes over top, it's not going to peel the decals and such. And then, um, yeah, and then once I get the tracks in, we'll, we'll work with the tracks. And then we'll marry these two pieces together, and then we'll just continue on. So there we go. It's been a lot of fun so far. This has been a real fun build. Uh, I really like these M4s. Maybe we'll do a bunch more variants of these M4s in the future if you guys really like these. And then maybe we'll have a lot of fun with it. Maybe we'll just make like a real super M4, you know, a real ridiculous looking one. But we'll see. So thanks so much, guys, for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I look forward to your comments. Bye.